So welcome to part two of June 2022 regions. So the first question, question number 25 says, says does this uh, quadratic uh, x squared da 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 have imaginary roots? And the easiest way to do that is to graph it and see if the graph does not cross the x axis. So it could look either like that or it could look something like this, but basically it's not going to cross the x axis. That's the easiest way to do this question. So I just went ahead and graphed it. Look, magically it pops up and I'm going to go to my graph and let's see what happens. Do, do, do. Okay, there we go. So that looks exactly like the first thing that I drew. Um, and if I just want to make sure if I go hit window and I want to see more up because that's where it looks like the graph is. So I'm going to go to y, my y max right here. Why can I not speak today? And let's just be dramatic and put like 50. And let's see what's happening here. And da da and up. So since it does not cross the x-axis at all, right here's the x-axis, it does not cross it. Uh, that means that this has imaginary solutions. And we can say, does it have imaginary solutions? We could say yes, because the graph does not cross the x-axis or because there are no x-intercepts that are real, okay? Um, the other way to do it is to use the quadratic formula. So negative b um, says opposite of negative 4 is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So we have negative 4 squared. Make sure you put that in parentheses. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13. And then divided by 2a, which is 1. So let's put whatever I have here into the calculator. So this is the second way to do this problem. So let's quit this out. Second quit. And let's type in uh, parentheses, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. I said 4 times 1, and I put 4 times 4 times 13 and hit enter, and I'm going to get a negative. Okay, so that means that I have 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36, okay, divided by 2. As soon as we see this, right, under the radical, as soon as we see a negative under a radical, an i comes out, right? So this is going to equal 6i, so if I wanted to continue doing this, I would have 4 plus or minus 6i over 2, which is the same thing as 2 plus or minus 3i. As soon as I see that there's an I there, it is imaginary. So that's another reason why it has imaginary solutions, okay? All right, question number 26. So initial push of a child. Why are we pushing children? Oh, on a swing, okay. Um, causes da-da-da-da-da. Okay, so it looks like it travels 80%. So as soon as it says something like 80% and not like 80, like it continues by 80, this is a geometric sequence. Okay, geometric means that we're going to multiply to get to the next number. Um, determine in the first five swings. Oh, so the total distance. So this now becomes a geometric series. And the formula for geometric series is Sn. This is in your reference table, so you don't need to memorize it. A1 minus A1, parentheses, R to the N power divided by 1 minus R. So now this is just a matter of plugging stuff in. So what is our A1? So our A1, it says the initial push is 6. So that's our A1. So let me just go ahead and change the color here so I can A1. So that's going to be 6 minus 6 parentheses. Our R is, they tell us it's 80%. So 80% as a decimal, the R is going to be 0 0.80. So there's our R. So point Eight, zero. And then it says in the first five swings, so I'm going to put a 5 there, divided by 1 minus r, which is 0. 0.8. And this whole thing goes into the calculator. And when I put it into my calculator, I get this, which uh, it says to the nearest hundreds. So this is about 20.17. And what's our units? Feet. 20.17 feet is going to be our answer. Okay. That's question 26. All right, so there's question number 27. Solve this algebraically. Um, 
So I see that this has a denominator of n squared and so does this. So I would go ahead and move all the n squareds together. So minus 2 over n squared. So this cancels out. So I'm left with 3 over n is equal to 4 minus 2 is going to be 2 over n squared. Um, and then I could do, I have two fractions that are equal to each other. So technically at this point I could cross multiply, right? So I'm going to get, when I do that, I'm going to get 3n squared is equal to 2n. What is this? What is this equal sign? Come on. Is equal to 2n, right? Because how did I get that? 3 times n squared is 3n squared. 2 times n is 2n. So what we want to do is move everything to one side. So minus 2n minus 2n. So this cancels out. So I get 3n squared minus 2n is equal to 0. I'm going to factor out an n because it's common. And I'm left with 3n minus 2 equals 0. So what are my n's equal to, right? n is equal to 0 is 1. And 3n minus 2 equals 0 is the other. So add 2. 3n equals 2. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. You hear the pitter-patter of my little dog's feet. Um, so those are your two answers. And we have to check it. So we think n equals 0 and n equals 2 thirds, but there's a problem here, right? Because as soon as I plug in a zero here or here or here, I get error in the calculator, which we cannot have that. We cannot have no errors in the calculator. So this actually does not work. So the only answer is n equals 2 thirds, okay? There is a big hint here. Whenever it says the word completely, you know that it's gonna be more than one step. So the first thing that you do is you should notice that there's an x in all of these. That is our greatest common factor. Um, since this one right here is negative, I'm going to factor out a negative x because I don't like working with negatives. Um, so when I factor out a negative x, I'm going to get 2x to the third minus x squared minus 18x plus 9. Okay, And again, I can check it by distributing this. Um, if this video is going too quick, you should slow this video down or stop it and ask me if you get stuck. Um, anytime I have four terms like this, I can split it down the middle right here, factor out the left. So then I have uh, x squared parentheses 2x minus 1. And then over here I have, I know in the parentheses I'm still going to have 2x minus 1. So what's going to make that true? A negative 9. Right, so then... I take my x squared and my minus 9 and I bring it down. Um, and then my 2x minus 1 comes down and I can't forget my negative x. Okay. So now, again, keyword is factor completely. So notice this right here. This is a difference of perfect squares. So I can leave my negative x and my x squared minus 9 is going to factor into a double bubble. And I'm going to leave my 2x minus 1 because there's nothing that goes into that to break that down. But the x squared minus 9 breaks down into x plus 3 and x minus 3. And this is my whole answer, that whole thing, okay? Question 29. All right, this is definitely on the non-negotiable. So are these two things independent? So events of having blue eyes and wearing glasses. So having blue eyes and wearing glasses. All right, so what's the probability of having blue eyes? The probability of having blue eyes, you could put VE, blue eyes, is going to equal, right? Blue, here's blue eyes, so I'm going to take these two and add them together, and I get 0.40. So this is equal to 0.40. If it's independent, what that means is the probability of having blue eyes, right, given anything else, right, um, the in this case, the glasses, um, that these two, if these two numbers are the same, they are going to be independent. If they are different, then they are dependent. They are not independent, okay? So let's check that. So probability of blue eyes given glasses, All right? So let's do this. So what blue eyes and glasses, how many blue-eyed people also wear glasses? Blue-eyed wears glasses is 0.14. So 0.14 is going to go on the top. And remember, our formula for this is probability of blue eyes given glasses is equal to the probability of both blue eyes and glasses 
over whatever is second, in this case, probability of glasses. All right, so what is, we figured out the number on top, what is the probability of glasses? So wearing glasses, we're going to take all these numbers right here and add them up. And when we do that, we get 0.35. So that's the number that goes on the bottom, 0 0.35. 0 0.14 divided by 0 0.35, if you do that, is going to give you 0.4. And look, or 0.40, right? So these two numbers are the same. That means that, yes, they are independent. are independent and justify says we can do this in math and so we just showed that these two numbers are the same okay so that is sufficient that is enough that was question number 29 all right cooking with gas question 30 all right so over here um, remember that whenever you have something that looks like this you're going to split it up into the cube root of 81 times break it up into its parts right x to the 15th and we have third root of y to the ninth all right so here let's figure this out so the cube root of 81 is there a number that we can split this up into so this is going to be 9 times 9 uh, this breaks down into 3 3 3 3 right and so we're looking for the cube root of this okay so how many right to to come out right we need a group of three so we have one group of three right here so three comes out and then we have one three inside right here so this is going to be the cube root of three um this next one right here says we have 15 divided by 3, right, x to the 15 over 3. That's the same thing as x to the 5th. And over here, I have 9 divided by 3. That's it. There's no remainder, right? Or I can do groups of, I have 9, and I'm looking for groups of 3. So that's going to be y to the 3rd. So here, x to the 5th and y to the 3rd, they're the same. So we want to find out what is our fraction. Okay. So we could do that. So if I wanted to rewrite this right here, uh, the first one, we can rewrite this as, let me see if I can back up real quick right here. Um, so I can rewrite this as the cube root of 3 to the 4th power. So I have to rewrite it with the exponent. See that? So we know how to do this, right? Take 3 as the base. This number right here is our base. 4 is our exponent, so that goes on the top. The 3 is our root, so that goes on the bottom, right? So we have 3 to the 4 over 3 power, x to the 5th, y to the 3rd. And they're saying that this equals 3 to the a, x to the 5th, y to the 3rd. So this is just matching. Watch this. x to the 5th is the same. y to the 3rd is the same. The 3 is the same, right? So that means that what is a? a is equal to this exponent, right? So a equals 4 over 3 is our answer. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. All right, my favorite. These are easy points. This is just graphing. So I'm going to go to my calculator right here. I want to make sure since I have 2 pi here, I want to make sure my mode is in radians. So go to mode. It's in radians, so we're good to go. So now all we do is we type in the actual function. So the function says go to y equals. Let's clear what's there. So I put 2 cosine 1 half. So alpha y equals option number 1 is 1 over 2. Go next to it, put the x, close that, put plus 5. All right. So now critical, critical. It says on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Do you see that? So I'm going to hit window. And my x is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. 2, you see pi right here, right? It's in blue. So second, right, the little carrot, the mountain. Um, and then we want to go, so that's 2 pi, right? Let's go by pi as the scale. So let's hit second arrow again, okay? And then for our 
y's, right? It starts at 0 and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's do that. So let's go from our y min of 0, our y max is 10, and it goes up by 1. So that's good. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit graph. So now the next thing I'm going to do is everything that I see right here, I'm going to go ahead and graph. You're not going to, it doesn't say sketch, so I'm not just going to go, or, right? I'm going to literally go to my table. So let's go to my table, and I'm going to look across from 0 is 7. So from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm going to put a dot right here. Okay, do you see that? And then I want to see what my answer is for 2 pi. So to do that, I'm going to hit second window, which is my table set, and I'm going to put in 2 pi here. So 2 pi, and now let's go ahead and see what my table is. All right, so across from 2 pi is the number 3. So if I call, let's see if this is even, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so if I say that this right here, is where my 2 pi is going to be, 2 pi. Um, the number here is going to be 1, 2, 3, so it's going to go down to there. Um, and then half of that is going to be pi, right? Right. This is 2 pi, so this is like 1 pi, okay? So what is 1 pi, the answer across from 1 pi? So let's hit second table set again. Let's clear this and let's put in pi. So second and the little arrow. And then if I go over here to go to my table, across from pi, I see five. So I'm gonna go to one pi, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So that's three points. All right, we're, we're good. Um, we can go ahead and do a couple more if we'd like, right? So we have zero, we have pi, we have pi over two. Um, we can kind of like figure out if I go back to my table set, let's go ahead and start at zero again, go up by one. So I can use the rest of these numbers to kind of estimate. So across from across from three, there's about five. So if I go three is the same thing as that. Yep. All right, so if I go over here. I start at zero, and instead of going up by one, I could go up by pi, right? So pi, and then if I wanted to cut that, if I wanted to see what number goes here, I could do pi divided by two. So pi divided by two, and let's let's go by pi over two. Let's see what that is. So this first number is zero. This is pi over two, which is 6.414. So half of this, this is pi over two. And this is about 6.4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.4, should be right around there. So that's, that's a good thing. And then can I figure out what this number is right here? So this is pi over 2, 1 pi, which is 2 pi over 2. This right here is going to be 3 pi over 2. So it looks like 3 pi over 2, if I'm not really sure what that's going to equal. Right, I can go right here and I could put that in. So that's three pi divided by two. Hit enter. So that's four point seven. So across from four point seven I have three point five eight. One, two, three point five eight. So it looks kind of something like this, right? It's a little curved, goes down. And again, we're going to stop right here. Why? Because it tells us to go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? We're in a good spot. All right. Next one. A cup of coffee is left out. Why? Why? Okay. So here we have a bunch of numbers, and we have to type it in to get an exponential regression. So this is the easiest way to do this. Hit stat. Go to edit. And we're going to go ahead and plug these numbers in. 0, enter. 5, enter. 10, you get the point, okay? All right, so after you've plugged the numbers in, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to hit stat, you're going to go over to calc, and it tells us to do exponential regression. So these are all like other regressions. 
So I just hit up and look right here. X reg is choice zero. So I could just press zero or I can go to it. And then here you're just going to hit enter, 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 enter. Okay. And then it gives you the answer, right? It tells you that A is this and B is this. And they want us to round it to the nearest thousands. So remember, you have to put an equation. So you have to put the Y equals. They even tell you that, right? So Y equals, in this case, they have F of T. So instead of Y, let's go ahead and just use the variables that they give us. F of T is equal to. And the numbers that we got were 169.8. 136 right if you round it and then our b is going to be 0 0.971 again if you round it to the nearest thousands and then t instead of x is going to be our exponent okay that's it done all right another graphing one right so graph these two so i always reset my calculator in between things just to make sure that i have a clear screen so I plugged in Y1, Y2, and now graph. Remember, again, you can't just go doot doot, right? You have to actually plot points. So second graph gives you the table. So 0, 0. I'm going to do the, the first graph first, which is F of X, and then I'm going to label it, right? Uh, 1, negative 2. Then keep going, right? 2, negative 4. So sorry if my dog just scared the P out of you, but uh, this is what I have. So I have something that looks like this, right? You're going to try to be as, don't just make a point, right? Make sure that this is curved. You're going to try to do this better than I'm doing it right now. I'm doing this on the computer, so forgive me, but try to make this as smooth as possible. Good, smooth, up. And then one, two, that was three. Uh, what was four? Four is 16. So 16 is like all the way up there. So this is four. 16 is going to be somewhere all the way up there. So I'm going to go from here straight, right? Arrows at the end to show. And again, I did my best on the computer, but you get the point. And then I do the same thing for the 2x minus 5, right? So negative 2, negative 9. I'm going to do this kind of quick. I should do this in a different color just so you could see the difference. Negative 2, negative 9 is right there. So I just went ahead and did my line, and then that one, as you can tell, is way better than the one I did for before, right? Um, and so that is what we have. And then you want to make sure, just arrows at the end of the line. Um, and then the last thing that you're going to do after you graph it is answer the next question. So state the number of solutions. So the number of solutions that we have are intersections. So there's an intersection there. That's one two and three so there are three right it doesn't say what are they it just says how many of them are there okay question 34 we're in a good spot okay so they have this wonky formula right here um, and they tell us a bunch of different things they give us okay the first was constructed in 1851 don't care uh, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. It has a pendulum length of 67. So L is the length of the pendulum. So this is 67. Uh, it tells us 9.81, which is the constant. So this one right here is going to be our G. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so we have L and G. All right, so now it just we're going to take this and we're going to just plug it in. So we have T equals right 2 pi that's just part of the formula square root l so we have l is 67 so 67 is going to go on the top and then 9.81 is going to go on the bottom and this is just something that we can plug into our calculator and when you do this you're going to get it says to the nearest tenth of a second you're going to get 16.4 tenth of a second 
Okay. All right, so that's our tenth place. Good, that wasn't so bad. This looks harder than it is. Uh, and then it says takes 9.6 seconds to complete. So that is our T. So we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and write 9.6 equals because that's our T. So we plug it back into the formula, 2 pi. And then in this case, they're asking us to find L. So we need to find out what L is. And the 9.81 stays the same. All right. So how do we get L by itself? It does not say algebraically, right? So low key, you could literally just Y1, Y2, go ahead and do it that way and then see where it intersects. So I just went ahead and plugged it in to my calculator. Now I'm gonna go ahead and graph, that's the 9.6. And then the next one is gonna be the two pi, ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. And I can see right now, like, look, they're gonna intersect somewhere here, right? So my y is good but my x needs to be moved over more so i'm going to go to window and my x max i'm going to go ahead and just put like 25. let's see if that works yeah and this is just like a guess and check and so now i want to hit second trace option number five is intersection so I want to go as close to that intersection as possible. So that way I'm not like figuring out having my calculator try to play games with me. So I'm going to go again as close to that as possible. I mean, I could go a little bit further, but you get the point. And hit enter, enter, enter three times. And it gives you about 22 point, yeah, to the ninth, tenth. Uh, that's going to be 22.9. So our L is going to be about 22. Point nine. Let's see if I could write that better. Twenty-two point nine to the nearest tenth of a meter. So there is our L. Okay. If you wanted to do this by hand, you could. Um, you would still get the same answer. So you have nine point six equals two pi, square root of L divided by nine point eighty one. Would take longer, but first thing, divide both sides by nine pi. I'm sorry, by two pi. So divide by two pi. So this cancels out. We have to try to get the L by itself, right? So we have 9.6 divided by 2 pi equals square root of L divided by 9.81. Opposite of square root is to square both sides. So I'm going to square the right and square the left. So then this cancels out. So I'm left with L divided by 9.81 is equal to all of this squared. So 9.6 divided by 2 pi squared. To get the L by itself, multiply this by 9.81, multiply by 9.81, right, cancels out, and I get L by itself, put all of that into the calculator, and you still get the same thing, okay? L is about 22.9. All right, question 35, we're almost done. This question is literally meant to confuse you. This is on the non-negotiable. As soon as you see middle 95%, mean plus or minus two times standard deviation, automatic, okay? So what does that mean? Mean is, hey, mean, mean, uh, 0 0.0651 plus or minus two times the standard deviation, which is 0 0.034. So this just becomes something that I plug into the calculator, right? Let's go to my calculator, get rid of this. So I always do the, the minus one first because I want the smaller number. So smaller, we always put it from left to right. Uh, minus two times uh, 0 0.034, hit enter in the calculator. Why did I just put parentheses? I don't know. And then I get negative point, I feel like I did something. Oh, 0. 0.651. That makes more sense. Okay, let me go back over, watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to literally just delete that. 0. 0.651, okay, I typed that in right. All right, so I have 0.583, but it says round to the nearest hundredth. So that's going to be about 0.58, okay? And then I do the other one, right, the plus. Now watch, instead of typing the whole thing again, I go up and I grab it just by hitting enter. I go to the left here, and instead of that minus sign, I want a plus sign, and this gives me the upper. So it's 0.72, because again, I'm rounding it to the nearest uh, hundredth, so this is... 2.72, okay? 
So this is my answer. And then I have this question. So it finds that 122 of them drive to work. So it's 122 out of the 200. So this is uh, 0.61. So I want to see if this 0.61 falls here, right? And if it does, then the answer is, should they conclude that it was effective? Um, and the answer here is no, right? Because point no, because 0.61 falls within the middle 95%, 95% of the data. All right, next question. So this one, low key, I could have given this to you in Algebra 1, and you would have been like, boom, I got this, unless you were doing PBAs about trees. All right? All right, so let's move on. So here, we want to get the Y by itself here, so we can take this and we can plug it into this one right here. So let's do that. So subtract 5 from both sides, minus 5, and this cancels out. So I'm left with Y is equal to 2X minus 5. And then I'm going to take this 2x minus 5 and plug it in here. So that's going to be x squared plus, right, my new y is 2x minus 5. I'm going to square it. Don't forget that equals 25. All right. So we have x squared. 2x minus 5 squared is going to be the same thing as 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5, right? That's what squaring means, equals 25. And again, if it didn't say the word algebraically, I could just plug this into the calculator, get an answer, but it says algebraically, okay? Um, so you use box method here, or you FOIL that out, and when you do that, you're going to get x squared, that comes down, plus this is going to give you 4x squared minus 20x, if you did this correct, plus 25 equals 25, right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to see x squared plus 4x squared gives us 5x squared. Um, yeah, this is going to be minus 20x plus 25 equals 25. Let's move everything over to one side. So minus 25 minus 25. This actually works out beautifully. So it's going to be 5x squared minus 20x equals 0. This is on the non-negotiables, right? If what's our greatest common factor here, it's going to be 5x. And then we're left with x minus 4 equals 0. So this gets split into 2. 5x equals 0 is one answer. And x minus 4 equals 0 is the other answer. Add 4, switch the sign. So you're going to get x equals 4 here. And over here, divide both sides by 5, and you get x equals 0. Okay. So you have two x's. Um, so if I plug it back in, both of them are going to work. Um, but I have to get my y's. So how do I get my y? I got 0 and 4. So I know that, that those are my x's. So I can make like a little table here. Here's my x. Here's my y. So I have, right, I could take this right here. So I have 0 and I have 4. Okay. So to get my y's, I plug it into here. 2 times 0, 0. Minus 5 is negative 5. Um, or I could plug it into my calculator if I didn't know that. Right, I can go here to y equals, I can clear this and clear this, and I can put in 2x minus 5, and again, all I'm doing is I'm putting the second function here, and then I go to my table, and I'm looking across from 0 and 4. 0 is negative 5, and 4 is 3. So 0, negative 5, and 4 is 3, so those are my two answers. Done. And so I would just write my answers like this. Or you could put it in the table uh, like this as well. All right, moving on. Last question, question number 37. So it says, identify the percentage of the annual group. So let's look at this real quick, right? So this right here is the growth. Um, it says, take the previous and then multiply it by 1.015. So remember the formula that has this, 1 plus or minus the r to the t, right? A equals, that's also in the non-negotiables. But when we have this right here, it's the annual rate of growth, right? We take the 1.015 and we have to subtract 1 from it, right? See this, how this is being added? 1 is being added to the rate. 
So if you want to find out what the rate is, you do 1.015 minus 1, which is 0 0.015. Okay, so that's as a decimal. They want us to put it as a percentage. So to move from percentage from decimal to percent, you move the decimal two places to the right, and you get this is 1.5% is going to be your percentage of growth. Okay. The next one says write an exponential function. So now we're taking this and we're right, we're taking something that's recursive, take uh, the previous term multiplied by 1.15 and we're making it into an exponential function. Remember, exponential function has to have an equal sign. So P of T, instead of Y, P of T equals. So we wanna put, this goes back to this formula right here, right? The P is what number do we start with? We start with 92.2, so 92.2. And then we do the rate, right? Here's our rate, 1.0. 1, 5, because that's, it's growing, right? 1 plus uh, the 0 0.015 is 1.015, and we raise that to the t power, because t is the number of years, okay? So this is the second part. Not too bad. According to this model, determine algebraically the number it takes for the population to be approximately 300 million people, okay? So this is in, if I go back to this, it says the population in millions of people can be represented, okay? So how many millions is this? 300. So we have 300 is equal to, and we're gonna put it equal to the 92.2 uh, parentheses 1.015 to the T, okay? So first thing we wanna do is we wanna get this weird thing right here by itself. Um, so this is, there's a Loki a multiplication symbol there. So the opposite of multiplication is divide. So the first thing we want to do is divide everything by 92.2. And again, if it did not say algebraically, you could Y1, Y2, and see where they intersect. Um, if you did that on the calculator and you got your answer, um, that would have given you out of, if you got this first part, the second part, you would have gotten five points out of six. That's That's a lot. That's a lot actually, um, but let's go ahead and try to get all points. So we have 300 divided by 92.2 is equal to, over 92.2 is equal to 1.015 to the T, okay? So we can take this right here, right? The opposite of exponents are logs. We just did this. So we could go ahead and we can log the left and we can log the right. Okay, and if we do that, or we can take this and we can rewrite this as base, right, exponent, answer, um, we can rewrite it as well. Um, why don't we go ahead and do that? Actually, let's do that. Because I want you to actually get into the habit because it'll save you some, some work. So I want to refresh your memory here. What do I mean by what I just said? So here is, this is 92.2 base right the base goes here log of 1.015 the base the exponent is the answer to the log so that's equal to t that's what we want to find the answer goes right here 300 over 92.2 so now this just becomes a calculator question right i go to my calculator turn it on get out of this let's clear this so how do i input a log right i go math I have log base, which is this right here, and I'm just gonna put in what I have, 1.015, and then over here I put alpha y equals, option number one, so 300 on the top, and I have 92.2 on the bottom, and I'm gonna hit enter, and there's my answer, boom. Right, so T, why did I do that, T, is about, right, it says round your answer to the nearest year, so that's about 79 years, okay? Done. All right, under 40 minutes, that was the goal. All right, good job. I'm very proud of you. Can't wait to see how you do on the regions. Great job.